thing. So, uh, okay, so IPv4, okay, so we all know full well that uh, pretty much everything has a physical address. Everything that connects to the internet, anyways, has a physical address, and we call that the MAC address. Now, if you have something, a network as small as a home address, or a home network, or even a business network, uh, any two devices, any number of devices within the same local network like that can send stuff between, uh, between each other based on just the physical address. Now, this is because the uh, MAC address table for the network is small enough uh, so that it's practical on that scale. Now, um, if we start expanding that, if we start expanding that to, like, a business, uh, network, um, uh, like, right now we're in the coronavirus epidemic, uh, which I am dubbing the Great Panic from World War Z. Um, a lot of hospitals are going to be, are needing to uh, network together to form basically one big global, um, one big global uh, biomedical network. Now on that scale, each hospital is its own local network and each research lab is its own local network. But if we start connecting them together, the number of computers uh, even in all labs and hospitals in one city, the uh, MAC address table is much too large, even on that city-wide or municipality-wide uh, network of hospitals. The MAC address table is much too large for that level of network to be practical to send information between uh, computers. Uh, so, a different type of, uh, a different type of addressing needs to take place so that we can send from one router to another, and from a router standpoint, send it from there. Uh, so that is going to be where IP comes into play. Basically, what we have here is, um, the MAC addresses are physical addresses. Uh, if you have a MAC address for a machine, that MAC address is ingrained into the hardware of that machine. Uh, for those of you who know what uh, know about ROM, it's basically ingrained into one of the ROM chips in, uh, in whatever the device is. Uh, now, IP addresses are, are what are called logical addresses. They are not ingrained into the hardware of anything. Uh, of course, you have an IP address on your uh, for your computer, but that IP address for your computer uh, can be removed and it can be changed so it's not ingrained in the hardware. That makes it a logical address uh, addressing scheme. So basically, um, uh, since uh, IPs are what uh, get you from one network to another, it's basically uh, getting, it's on the uh, layer three. It's on the network layer of the OSI model. And so uh, that's why and so, what that means is, it's the addressing that you use for, um, for, uh, packets. Uh, that's why packets use IP instead of, uh, MAC or, uh, port numbers. Uh, IP addresses are also, uh, 30, IPv4 is 32-bit.
I mean, it's a binary address. I mean, what you see is decimal, but at its very basic, it's uh, binary. Uh, what you see is basically uh, after the binary has been converted to decimal. An example of this is 192.168.1.1. Uh, that would be for a computer. And there are five different classes of IP addresses. Uh, this basically uh, tells you the IP range. Uh, okay, it basically associates. Uh, it basically tells you first and foremost uh, what the IP range is, and secondly, what um, what it's used for. Classes A through C are used for uh, assigning addresses to uh, machines. And then, uh, with this in mind, uh, class A is uh, uh, so. Uh, class A is on the range of 1.0.0.0 to 126.255.255.255. And yes, I am including uh, the first network address and the last uh, possible uh, broadcast address in this as well. Because that's how my brain works. Uh, so class B is going to be this range. Uh, class C is going to be that. And then class D is going to be uh, this range. And then class E is going to be the last lot. And, uh, class D is for, uh, multicasting. Uh, so yeah, these are the, uh, five classes, and it is also good to know, uh, the, uh, subnet mask address for each one of these, because subnetting is a huge part of IPv4. Uh, so for class A, it's going to be 255.255. 0 .0 0. And I will cover in more detail what subnet masks are in a moment. Alright, so the subnet mask for class A is where the first octet is 255, the rest are zeros. Class B is the first two are 255, and the last two are zero. And class C is where the first three octets are 255, and the fourth one is zero. And so basically what a subnet mask is, is uh, it's the thing that tells you uh, what... Um, it basically tells you uh, the distinction between the network part of the address and the uh, and the machine part of the uh, IP. So if you have something like uh, uh, okay, so for example, if you have something along the lines of one nine two dot one six eight dot forty two dot thirty two, and it has a subnet mask of uh, 255.255.255.0. Uh, that means that the uh, network IP is going to be uh, 192.168.42.0 and that uh, the host IP is going to be uh, 0.0.0.32 for a total IP address of what's given here. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, in the subnet mask, uh, all, all three of the first three octets are filled up in uh, the decimal form of uh, an octet is going to be maxed out when the binary is maxed out. This is where the, bi uh, the fundamental binary part of IP comes into play. Uh, each octet is eight bytes, or not eight bytes, 
Each octet is eight bits. So each octet can only go up, uh, if you count starting from zero, you can only go up to 255. And so if, since all three of the first three in the uh, subnet mask are filled up to the max, that means that it's, uh, that's going to be what's associated with the network IP address. And since the last uh, octet of the, set, the subnet mask is zero, you multiply that by anything and it's going to be zero. So that's going to be the, uh, the host part of the IP address.